I'm here today at Microsoft Build, the annual conference that Microsoft hosts where they talk about all their latest advancements, particularly in AI and agentic web. But for you guys, today I'm going to be interviewing Microsoft software engineers and asking them the difficult question, how do I land a job at Microsoft as a software engineer? There's a lot of value to unpack in this video. I hope you guys are ready and let's get it. What's your name and what do you do? I'm Karen and I'm a senior software engineer at Microsoft. My name is Dylan Rose. I'm a principal software engineer. My name is Victor Vasquez. I'm a software developer. How did you actually become a software engineer at Microsoft? So I started as a UX designer at Microsoft around six years ago, and I applied internally. I decided I wanted to switch and went through the standard software engineering interview loops, mm -hmm. coding round, design round, etc. Yes, yeah, so I joined Microsoft straight out of university. I actually ran into a career fair that was happening up in, I went to University of Toronto, and I walked up to the Microsoft booth, I handed off my resume, had a chat with a the recruiter. They reached out, they did like a coding screening at the university, uh -huh. then after that they flew me down here to do like a full day of interviews. Right. Personally, I applied when I was in the fall semester of my senior year. Really needed to be prepared on your algorithms and data structures, be a culture fit, be interested in the industry, be a little nerdy, I would say. And when you were getting into Microsoft, what was the application and interview process like? From a recruiting event actually happening in Mexico, I was invited and went through a series of interviews and eventually got yeah. the chance how many, to... How many interviews and were they technical, behavioral? Uh -huh. Two technicals, one behavior and one designing. There's just the standard like leak coding type problem solving questions. And how many rounds of interviews did you have? Which ones were technical, which ones were behavioral? Three were technical and one was behavioral. Got it. How many interviews did you do that day? That day I did. And what were they technical, behavioral? They were technical interviews. It was like a technical part and then you also a uh, part where you get to chat with the engineer. Uh -huh. I was like, I think I did four to five. Four to five interviews. Yeah. Wow. Um, like a super day interview. Yeah, yeah. It was a full oh. day. How long after the interview did you get an offer about 20 days for me probably like two to four weeks and what was on your resume or from your previous experience that was so impressive that microsoft recruiters wanted you microsoft was looking for someone who could do both uh, back end and front end a self learner and be like really a passion about technology throughout my university like every summer i did some works at some startups so maybe like having some sort of development experience caught their eye. But uh, I feel like during the interview process, the thing that really helped me was that I actually was kind of interested in what they were building. So naturally they throw out the question like, oh, if you were part of our team, what would you focus on next? And I think that is where I answered in a way that lit up the engineer's you, eye. You showed your how you'd be a fit into their piece. Basically, yes. Right. And as a principal software engineer, when you're hiring interns or entry level people, what are target skill sets you look for? Not necessarily skill sets, but I, I do look for what I call nerdiness, which is just a general interest in the field that this person has kind of taken upon themselves to do like a, just a touch more of what you would have done in school for free, like doing things that aren't just your school assignments, but actually having genuine interest and going kind of that extra step. Show that you're interested in this and you want to kind of perfect your craft. From a, a coding perspective, I mean, yeah, it is just those data structures and algorithms and being able to speak about them fluently, which is really showing the mastery. As a principal software engineer, mm -hmm. when you interview entry level software engineers or interns, what target skill sets do you look for? The very first basic one is like coding. You should be able to solve lead code, be able to figure out test cases for those, your like whatever problem statement you have. So that's the like very basic requirement, right? Apart from that, certain fundamentals, so like if you, for example, you know, parallelization, like if you have a problem statement, how do you, you know, optimize your code for that? You know, how do you optimize for, you know, CPU or memory usage? Yeah. And apart from that, like, yeah, basic team player skills. And if I'm a beginner in tech and I want to become a software engineer at a big tech company like Microsoft, mm -hmm. what's your number one recommendation? Take your passion and build things that inspire you. That definitely did help with my application that got them to be like, oh, you are an UX designer, but you look like you can code. I've seen your projects on GitHub. You're passionate about what you do and it really made my application stand out. Yeah, passion and also display your work. Have projects out there on GitHub. Show code and show your projects. One thing that is really key right now, AI yeah. skills. Prompt engineering, learning how to use like GitHub Copilot and all of those assistants to make you more productive. One thing that I think is underrated is if you have the opportunity to go to like meetups and talk to either engineers or like people from the company, right. I think that really helps because not only do you get to learn a lot, but you also get face-to-face -face time. Yeah, forming warm connections. Yes. Will AI replace software engineers? I don't think so. Mm. 
I don't think they will replace every software engineer. But some? Some people are at risk? Um, to a certain extent, I think it will speed up the software development velocity. So I guess you just have to be an engineer that is able to leverage AI because a lot of like creativity and design and innovation cannot come from AI because it's trained on existing data. New stuff is still coming from our imaginations. And will AI replace software engineers? It's a good question. I think that's it. <laughs> it definitely will change the role of software engineers yeah. like even now like the time versus like if i want to spin up a simple demo app i now use ai because it cuts down the amount of time that i have to spend to build this up from the ground right, up. Right. so definitely will change the nature of the job at least mm -hmm. yeah specifically in what regards development time will ai replace software engineers it's actually hard to say at this time what do you say i mean right now the uh, agenic coding I've only seen it to be successful in about one file at a time, but that is kind of a start in that direction. There will always be someone kind of piloting this, and it is possible that in the future coding could look very different, and you would need to evolve your skill set to be able to code in this kind of codelish language where it's like half code, half English. That is itself going to become the skill of a software developer in the future. Will AI replace software engineers? The thing is that the models are getting really good. And that is something to think about because the models are getting really good. Yeah. But I also think at the same time, we still need software engineers to architect the products to when things don't work as expected. You want to be able to debug that mm. code customize that code. So you still need your foundations. I think you still need your foundations. I think we'll still need software engineers. And is a computer science degree still worth it? I think so, yeah. Undergraduate degree, it's yeah. definitely worth it. Compared to the money that goes into the education and the salary that you get after the graduation, pays for itself. I think that depends on people. Tuition is expensive and all that stuff. I think it's a nice structure because starting from scratch and not knowing what to do is yeah. kind of difficult. So if there's like a structure, forces to follow, it's not a bad idea, yeah, but it but just, you know, depends your on- Your financial situation. Yeah. Is a computer science degree still worth it for software engineers? I think so. Wow. Yeah, I went through a computer engineering degree and I learned through a bunch of pieces of the computer stack, which I wouldn't have ex had exposure to otherwise. Right. So just in the from the curiosity perspective, it's definitely kind of worth it. Yeah. And is a computer science degree still worth it for software engineers? Absolutely. An undergrad degree in computer science is the most important thing. And in my view, I mean, it should be the default, in my opinion. I think it's kind of strange, but there should just basically be every degree with uh, computer science attached. So in the sense, having a computer science degree is just the only degree you're getting is kind of almost like the basis of you should kind of have another specialty with it. Everything is going to be made much easier when you're able to code. Like you could take any industry and if you can code as well, you're going to be able to kind of amplify your, your impact. You want to be as competitive as possible in the current market. So I think having a degree makes you just slightly more competitive. But I think there's so many other ways to learn right now because all of the information is online. Right. You can teach yourself a lot. But I would say still just to be competitive, it's probably a good idea just to have it. If I'm a beginner, what is a good coding project that I should do that might help me get the eyeballs of recruiters? One cool way of discovering cool projects is going to GitHub and finding for those projects, open source projects with a lot of stars over there. There's usually a ton for every language. If you have a favorite language, find those with multiple stars and start engaging, right? Like make questions over there, start looking at the code, bring the code to AI and ask to explain what are they doing here and everything, understand it, and start trying to pick issues. Usually on, on open source, there will be like tags for beginners and things like that, that you can start getting engaged with with big projects yeah. and and collaborating with other developers that's that's totally a, a very cool. good way to start now AI is the hype so yeah. I would definitely go there's a lot of everyone's releasing new AI tools new AI SDKs I would yeah. just pick one of those and spin up a simple app so give me an can, example of can you build an app that feeds documents, local documents, to an LLM. And uh, then you can talk to your local documents or something like cool. that. Following some YouTube tutorials that are out there where you can build up an entire stack, have it deployed, connected to real databases, real telemetry systems. Right now, it's so easy. There's so many toolboxes out there for you just to, just in a few command line commands, you can have an, an entire real deployed system set up, deployed to Vercel or yeah. anything like this. Like you can have a Postgres database deployed, a real one, up with just to 
see it in the real world yourself having coded it, it's kind of un unlocks your mind about what's possible. Right now, for example, people were really excited about, you know, OpenAI's image generation mm -hmm. API. Yeah. And so I would do something there like that. I would make wave on Ghibli, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and everyone yeah, was yeah. making animated pictures yeah. of themselves. So I would, for example, take the API and build out an application that allows people to convert their selfies mm -hmm. into Ghibli-fied animation yeah. stuff. So that's what I would do. I'd look for what's trending and go for that. What's the number one tech skill beginners should learn? Effective prompt engineering and learning. Object-oriented programming is a good start. Debug. To be honest, that's something that I do a lot in my work yeah. is like finding bugs and fixing those bugs. And part of that is like learning how to read errors. Mm -hmm. That's like a very good skill. Right, like right. when you're getting an error from your program, reading the error, figuring out where that's leading to, great skill to have. What's the number one mistake beginners in tech make? just blindly copying and pasting stuff from GPT. You have to take your time and understand the fundamentals. And what do you think is the number one common mistake beginners in tech make? I think students coming out of school are in this uh, homework and project mindset that school puts you in. So you show up to your job and you get these first tasks and you treat them like they're homework and you do them and it's homework and I do it. And you do that for like years and years of your career. And eventually you wake up to the fact that everyone is just building things, that this work doesn't just get given to you, that you can be the inventor of work for your organization. Like you can go and find work. You can go and look at what all the other organizations are doing and bring that back to your team and be the creator of work. The more senior people that you are working with, that is what they are doing. Right. I believe like common mistake is, you know, not aligning yourself soon enough with something that you like. Talk to your manager to align yourself with some important project with visibility project. Mm -hmm. so, so that kind of gives you like you know, a clear pathway to yeah. growth. Typically, don't be afraid to, you know, have two projects, like yeah. one which is not very visible then, but then, yeah. Visibility is huge. Yeah. Well, that's about all I have in this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're interested in my absolutely free tech newsletter, make sure to click the link. It'll be down below in the description. And if you're interested in what software engineers actually do on a day-to-day -day basis, you might like this video right here.